Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm not sure if anyone is in this group or not. If you all can hear me, just maybe send a chat or a comment in the chat box if you can. Either way, I'll begin now. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam wa ba'id. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Salim Chaney and insha'Allah ta'ala today on behalf of 5-2 Initiative, I want to give a talk about a topic that a lot of people might have in mind, which is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, why is it so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends plagues, torments, or punishments to people when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known to be the most merciful? And with the current plague that has kind of overtaken or the pandemic that has overtaken the world now, that may be a question that a lot of people may have as to how someone so merciful, so compassionate, um, full of mercy would send something of such sort to mankind or anyone or any being and it caused such a problem or chaos that it is caused as it, as it is causing now and what I want to first start out with is we have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is number one merciful in ways that we personally as people may not be able to see we may not be able to even sometimes comprehend the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it may be given to us with that being said we still do have to be somewhat logical um, and somewhat use our minds to appreciate that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does do for us and sometimes it's not necessarily the fact that Allah isn't merciful to us but we as people just cannot conceptualize or there's a deficit in our deficiency i should say in our intellect and how we may be uh, how we maybe comprehend things or we see things and so the very first thing that i want to talk about is that we have to recognize and know that everything that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates that there's not a thing that Allah creates that is absolute evil without a purpose. Well, what does that mean? Some of you may be thinking that, oh, well, how is that possible? I will use shaitan as my example. Shaitan himself is an evil being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put some sort of good inside of shaitan himself. And what is that good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe has put in shaitan or has put in shaitan is that some of you may know of the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and how he taught or how shaitan told him or taught him ayatul kursi to keep him away. If you look into the tafsir of Ibn al-Kathir, you will find the hadith is a very well-known hadith of Abu Huraira during the time of zakat al-fitr. He was in charge of it. And Shaitan came three times consecutively. And on the third time or the third night that he came, um, Abu Huraira, he taught Abu Huraira ayatul kursi in order to keep him away. That was something that Shaitan taught him good to keep him, i.e., Shaitan, away from him and away from him at nighttime or whenever it was um, to be protected from him. But also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Shaitan not only to spread evil or to commend evil, but he also as well spread, or he also created shaitan, uh, he also created shaitan in order to teach us the opposite. So shaitan may have a lot of things that he disposes to us that is evil. However, from that evil that we find in that act that shaitan has done, it teaches us how to be good. 
It teaches us how to stay on the straight path. It teaches us the opposite of what shaitan does, right? And so with that being said, we also see in sicknesses and plagues that we won't find a cure unless we know what the sickness is. And we have a sickness now that we are experiencing throughout the globe. And we are finding as time goes on more and more things that are bringing about a cure for the current plague or disease that's widespread globally, right? And also another thing that we could say is that with sicknesses, we find cures also with any other opposites. So we experience or we know what is hot because we've experienced cold and vice versa. So all of these things by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating its opposite, we will also be able to deduct or also get from that the, the greatness of whatever or appreciate the greatness of whatever that opposite was or learn something from its opposite. The next thing that I want to mention is how is it possible or will we recognize the wisdom behind everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does? And if we don't recognize that wisdom and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a thing, if that is the case, then why is it, how do we consider that wisdom? Well, just like everything else in the world, we as people don't understand everything. We as people are not going to conceptualize everything that goes on around us, even when we're talking about ourselves as human beings. So what about the one who created us and created everything in this complex dunya that we live in? This complex place that we live in that even some of the most basic or simple things that maybe I understand that you might not understand or you may understand that I may not understand all of these complexities that we have just because we don't understand the reasoning behind it doesn't take away the reality of what it truly stands for. So in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's case, Allah is most merciful and he's merciful in a way that, be, that befits him. And the ways that he sends down that mercy may not always be a, in, if you want to say, correlation or ties in with how we as people think at all times. But that does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deficient, but rather what it means is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, And we have created man, or man was created weak. And so we have weaknesses within us. But the power and might and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one that befits him in whichever way he sees fit. The next thing that I want to bring about or I want to express part number two or section number two of this talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy that he has upon us in times like we're living in right now is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brings about in these difficult times he brings about goodness and people begin to recognize the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put around them. If you look around now, you look at everyone's at home, everyone's quarantining or they should be. And while we're inside of our homes doing pretty much, if you want to say nothing or, or something else that we may be doing, we also are inside of our homes appreciating and being thankful for what we did have because of what's been taken away from us. And so it brings about us being uh, grateful, I should say, for the things that we had before they were taken away. I'll give you an example. I saw a meme a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week. It was a little meme with four people in a, uh, at a window. There's this man looking out the window and he sees the masjid and he hears the adhan being called. And when he hears that adhan being called, he says, ah, I'll go another day. And then the next day he hears it again and he says, ah, I'll go another day. Then he hears it a third time telling him to come out and pray, hayat al-salah, come to the prayer. And then again, he still says, ah, I'm busy, I'm doing something, I'll go the next day. Well, the next day happened to be a day where, in this case that we live in now, COVID-19 came around and so the Adhan was switched. It was not come out and pray, but rather it's pray in your homes. And then he says, man, the guy says, man, I wish I could go to the masjid right now. 
So that moment that you had where you could have all of those moments before where you could have went out and you could have done something of khair, you didn't realize the goodness that you had or the great things that you had until it was taken away from you. And so how can that, how can we turn that into something that might be merciful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We could look at that and we could say, you know what? It's a wake up call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. Allah is giving us a wake up call right now to bring us back and say, hey, Remember all those things that I gave you the ample time to do and you decide not to do them? Well, now I'm going to take away those, those privileges that you had so that you can now see what you could have done and what you would much rather do right now rather than stay in your home. And so you'll appreciate them more when they actually are readily accessible again if they are readily accessible again. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up the doors for us to be able to go back to our masjids, our masajids, and or our masajid. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up our doors to be able to just go outside and be regular people again and and communicate, socialize with people like we once did before. Because right now, all of those things that we used to do before, they're all gone. They're Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has just taken them all away. We don't have them. And so by that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about goodness within a society. The next thing that we can learn from this and see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us somewhat of a of mercy from him is that I kind of touched on it in the first point, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us good by way of its opposite. So you could take the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu who said كان الناس يسألون عن الخير وكنت أسأل عن الشر مخافته that the people used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about good but I used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about evil for fear that I would fall into it and so sometimes knowing the opposite of whatever you're doing will teach you how to appreciate or do whatever the other thing is, right? And so with this right here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, again, taken away things from us, the opposite of what we used to have, which was having our freedom, right? And being able to do whatever we wanted. This was something that we had. We, some of us maybe didn't recognize the blessings that we had that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. So he took that away. He's showing us the opposite. And so now we're living by that opposite, which is teaching us now to be grateful for what we had before. And another thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kind of taught us through this time is it also brings forth greatness in people. You find the good in people also coming forth as well. People are doing a lot more proactive acts of charity, good, trying to help each other out more so than they probably have ever done a very long time where you see everybody around you suffering everyone's going through a hard time and so it makes you as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith of his to want for your brother what you want for yourself you find a lot of people now trying to help each other out and actually applying these prophetic traditions or sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our everyday lives and that's not just for muslims but that's also for non-Muslims as well. Everyone is trying to help each other around. Everyone's trying to get together in, a, in the ways that we can to help each other to make a collective effort to make this the best situation that we can in our, in our best way, shape, fashion, or form. Whether that's on a community level, whether that's on a neighborly level, whether that's just within your home, whatever it is, it's bringing about the goodness in people and bringing forth people to do good in any way, shape, fashion, and form that we can. And that is also another wake up call or another thing that we could say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now putting a, a check. He's checking something off for us to think about. He's also, if you want to say, re giving us a chance to reevaluate ourselves. We're having this time, this quarantine time to reevaluate ourselves. Now, does that mean that there are some people who are not taking this time? Because you do have a lot of people right now that aren't taking this time to really reevaluate themselves, reevaluate what reality really is. But you have people sitting around wasting time, sitting on their couch, binge watching Netflix, 
scrolling down the timeline on Facebook, whatever you might be doing, sending Snapchats all over the place, right? Or TikToks or whatever else is out there that you're out just, just doing, wasting your time. And when you have these people that are doing this, or if you're one of those people, if I'm one of those people, we're out here and we're doing this, what better things could you be doing with your time right now? Rather than sitting there wasting it away, you're not benefiting from this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. This is a time also that Allah is giving you a time to maybe rekindle a relationship with your family, whether that be your wife, your children, your spouse, your children, anyone. It, it could be that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you because we sit here in America, we have this big long work schedules that we have where we're always on the go, always doing things, always, always just just non-stop working and we forget to have those family ties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has finally given you a chance to maybe sit down and rekindle some of those times that have been if you want to say loss so take that time to put your phone down take that time to get off the screen for a little while and spend time with your family because you might not have that time again anytime soon as well so that's another thing that we could get out of this time of quarantine that we could see that it could possibly be a mercy that Allah is giving us and in that light am I saying that in all of this that I've said so far that in this pandemic that is going on there isn't anything that has hindered or caused a problem to us I'm not saying that of course there have been things that have hindered lots of people from even going to work Lots of people have concerns that they won't be able to pay their rent next month. But without all of the overwhelming things that we are taking in and digesting or ingesting and digesting in our systems of overwhelming fear, we also need to have a balanced perspective of it and think of the good that can come out of it too. Because only living in fear will not do anything of good to you but also only living and rejoicing and optimism will not do anything good for you too. So you have to live a life that's balanced in whatever time you live in. And in this time, more, than, more so than not, is a time for us to try and be optimistic, but also be very aware of what bad may be happening as well. And understanding to, and trying to balance between the mercy of Allah and understanding there are good things that are going to come out of this and asking Allah to forgive us for any bad things that may come out of this or anything that we may have done to be the cause of why this may have happened and Allah Ta'ala knows best. The next thing that I want to mention out of this whole thing that is happening to us right now is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala brings people back to his religion through pandemics, through torments through punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings people back to him if you look at the prophets and the messengers who came before and you read their stories you see that every one of them they had a time where they warned and they told people and they warned and they told people to come back to the remembrance of Allah ta'ala and through that time of them reminding their people to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they got mocked they were mocked People made fun of them. People harmed them. People did all sorts of things to the prophets and messengers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all and grant them Jannah to Firdaus. But in the times that they were around and they were calling their people, imagine Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam calling his people the same people for 950 years. And the only thing that they did was mock him and make fun of him and told him he was a crazy person, told him he didn't know what he was talking about. They told him that we don't see anybody following you, nor except for the low down shepherds, you know, people who don't have anything. The higher ups are not following you. You can't be following the truth. When people get to this mindset where they're no longer thinking of Allah Ta'ala, then Allah comes or then Allah sends something that reminds those who re who remained, he reminds them of what they should be doing and it brings them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was a the Quraysh when they used to go on their trips or whatnot and one time they were on sea and so their ships and things were you know it was the sea was rough or whatnot and it was causing their their boat 
to go back and forth and, and whatnot. They thought they were going to shipwreck. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, فَإِذَا رَقِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ That when they were inside of this ship, right, and it was having these problems, they began to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a true sincerity, right? Because they thought that was the end of their life. They start calling on Allah. They, they, when they realize what's happening to them, they start calling on Him, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them because there's no one else that can help at that time. You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring something that incites a little bit of fear in a person to bring them back, right? When you die or when something happens to people, I should say, you find that the first thing that people are going to resort back to most of the time, whether Muslim, whether Christian, Jew, or whatever they may be, is a higher being, higher supreme being, right? If you're Muslim, something happens, you go out, you say, Yeah, Allah, Ya Rabb, Oh Allah, I can't believe this just happened. You start making dua. Or even if you don't start making dua, some, some hardship hits you. Where's the first place that a lot of people try and go to? They're having problems with their marriage, or they're having problems with this, or they're having any sort of problem. You usually find them going back to the masjid to find a resolve for the issue. They go try and find the imam. They try and find somebody who can help them religiously. Allah finds a way to bring you back to the haqq or to those people who can maybe help you in that regard, right? And likewise, when sorts of things like this happen, when a person really can't help you, we are helpless to each other right now, you return back to who? Allah Ta'ala, just as the Quraysh did in this time. But after they returned back home, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says about them, فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ That when we returned them safely to their lands, we found them people who were polytheists. They began doing the things of worshiping other than Allah, just like they used to do before, right? And so we have to remember that when we have these pandemics or problems that come about, and mind you, this doesn't just have to go for a pandemic or something catastrophic that's happening, but even the small daily issues that we have in our life, we could take these things as ayat or signs from Allah Ta'ala that he's trying to motivate us to come back to him. And when we overcome that problem, being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how many of us, as soon as we get out of the pickle, we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right away. We forget him right away. Like without a, about a blink of an eye, we're, we forgot about it. You know, you find people strung out on drugs. They're about to on the brink of death in the hospital bed. They having heart problems, they having breathing problems, whatever it might be. Allah gives them a second chance, right? They go right back out and do the same thing. You find someone who's having who 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 Allah subhanahu wa taala gave an a, a, a second chance to when they were maybe overweight or something like that. Said, okay, listen, you have to stop doing X, Y, and Z to kind of lose weight. You finally lose that weight. You finally find the solution to get rid of it, but you return back to the old things that you were doing before, not thinking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of your actions and also by what you say. Because when we are when we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we think Allah not only by saying, Ashkuruk, I thank you, O oh Allah Azza wa Jalla, I thank you for what you've given to me. But we also do it by way of our actions and how we actually live our lives daily. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, up, uh, by upholding and standing by his commandments. If Allah tells you to pray, that, and, you, and you're praying, you're making those five daily salawat, that's a way of you thinking or showing shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how many of us don't pray unless we're in, a, we're in a pickle? Or again, when you come back to the masjid and you're trying to get some help, or you're trying to do whatever you're trying to do, and you decide now you want to pray. Let me get down on the floor and let me start praying. That doesn't mean that what you're doing is necessarily all the way bad. Alhamdulillah, you do resort to prayer when there is something wrong and you don't resort to something else. But the moral of the story is that you should be doing that at all times because that will help you as well. I'll give you a point or a tip that uh, one of my uh, sheikhs, Abdul Rahman Muhyiddin, Hafidhullah, he told me about salah. He said, if you think about prayer, 
He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us five times in the day that we pray. And he asked me, he said, well, why do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you those five times daily that you pray? And I just said, you know, it's the time that we pray. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything for a reason. Why don't we pray all of those salawat at the same time? Why not just pray 17 rakat or 17 units of prayer at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day? And I thought about it. I said, well, I think that if people had to pray 17 units a day at one time, most people, it's already hard for people to pray. They really won't be praying then because you won't even be thinking about prayer. It'll become like an exercising routine. You're jumping up and down, counting how many rakat you have left to pray, right? And so your khushur is not there. Your tranquility, your, your thought for your consciousness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there. You're just trying to get them praying and that be the end, right? But he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these different times of the day to pray. When we first start our day off, when we first get up out of the bed, the very first thing we do is remember Allah. Then we start our day. So say something's going on in your day, right? You're having a hard day. You find yourself getting into stuff maybe you shouldn't be doing. And of course, all of us sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a second time of the day to remember him, dhuhr. Between Fajr and dhuhr, you have that time. And then when dhuhr comes, you have a time to basically go back, recheck yourself, reevaluate yourself and say, okay, it's time for, I'm, I'm praying. And once you get done praying, you might not return to whatever you're doing because you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's on your mind, right? And so we get that re-evaluation or that that check that we need that 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 checkpoint we go back to that five times a day and on the very last time as is from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you're not praying in the masjid that he would if he was not praying in congregation he would uh make salat of uh, salat of isha the last thing that he would do um in the night um that the last thing that a mu'min or a believer is supposed to do before he goes to sleep is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? That should be something that we do. But unfortunately, many of us, we're not doing that. When we get in the bed, we have our smartphone with us. We're binge watching whatever we're binge watching or again, going up and down our social media platforms, right? And so, as I said previously, to kind of get back to the, the topic of what I was, what I was talking about is... Allah uses these times of salah or excuse me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses these times of, if you want to say plagues or little small things that might happen to you or difficulties that come in your life to kind of bring you back to his remembrance and to bring you back to his deen, right? Can you imagine right now we're going into Ramadan? Ramadan is two and a half, three weeks away. Can you imagine? Well, just last year, nobody thought that we were not going to see Ramadan, but that we were not going to be able to pray in the masjids, that we were not going to be able to eat iftar with our brothers and our sisters. No one thought that, right? Just at the beginning of 2020, probably nobody thought that. But just that quick, it's gone. There will be no tarawih, most likely. There will be no iftar at the masjid, most likely. This is going to be the most, this is going to be the weirdest Ramadan that most of us have ever witnessed in our lifetime. Can you imagine how, how, how that affects people, how that affects lots of believers across the world, that that's going to be taken away from us? Even the Muslims that only come to the masjid during Ramadan, how that's going to affect them, right? So all of these things are wake-up calls for us. Man, the only time that I went to the masjid was simply during Ramadan, and now even that time when I wanted to go, I'm not going to have that time to go, right? These are wake-up calls. That's a mercy from Allah Ta'ala, because He's waking you up before you return back to Him, and it's too late. He's giving you that chance. He's waking you back up. So take that, take that wake-up call from Him and try and get back on track. The last thing that I want to mention, which would be point five or six, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this whole pandemics and tor tournaments and, and things like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also during these times, he wipes away sins. He wipes away the sins from people like no other time. 
He wipes away the sins of people and he forgives people like no other time. There was a time where Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, he heard the ayah of the Quran al Kareem where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, May Ya'malu Su and Yuzabihi Walam Yajidalahu Minduni Lahi Wadi Wala Nasira that whoever does an action of evil, then Allah will punish him or Allah will compensate him for that thing that he's done. He will he will punish him for that thing that he's done. And he will not find any person or being that will be able to help him or be a guardian for him. And so Abu Bakr, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, so every time that I sin, he was worried, he said, every time that I sin, does that mean that I'm going to be uh, rewarded or not rewarded, but compensated or punished for that sin that I've done? And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looked at Abu Bakr and he said, Ya Abu Bakr, ghafar Allahu lak. He said, oh, Abu, Abu, oh, excuse me, oh Abu Bakr, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. And then he went on in the rest of the hadith and he said, Ya Abu Bakr, do you not get sick? Abu Bakr, he replied in the affirmative, yes. He said, okay, do financial burdens and financial instabilities or hardships not overcome you? He said, yes. And so, in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking him these questions to the end of the hadith, mm -hmm. he's trying to show Abu Bakr that there are other things that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also gives you from trials and tribulations that will wipe out those sins that you've gotten. So not every sin that you, that you accumulate will be counted for in the sense that you will be punished for it. But look at also where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe away those sins by those small things, little things like a thorn uh, hitting you, all right? You get pricked by a thorn and there's a khati'ah or there's a sin that's wiped away from your, from your scale. Stuff's that simple. So imagine right now during this hard time that many people are going through, how many sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wiping away from us, right? And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this through his trial through these trials and these tribulations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to raise, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raising a person in his rank, right? He's raising a person to the rank that he subhanahu wa ta'ala sees fit, or a rank that he was supposed to to rise to. There's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that if there is a if a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he hasn't reached a certain point or a certain manzila or ranking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for him. He didn't reach it because of his actions that he's done. Maybe you don't have enough actions to accumulate to that area or that manzila or that ranking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you. Ibtalahullahu fi jasadi. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will try that person. Maybe with his body. Maybe he'll afflict him with some sort of disease or sickness. Doesn't have to be something that is, you know, going to kill you. But it could be something as simple as a cold as well. Awfi madi. Or in his wealth. Allah puts him in a, you know, a strong, a hard time. Right? Where ends get kind of tough. Oh, fi waladi. Or with his offspring. Allah might try you with your children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to do these little things like this. Try you with different tribulations within, with, throughout your lifetime. Hatta yablughu manzilata lati sabaqat lahu min Allah. Until he reaches a per, or until he reaches that ranking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for him. Right? So not all of us are going to reach that menzila or that ranking that Allah has special for you, special for me, because of our actions. But sometimes it might be through other means or ways, trials, tribulations, other things that might happen, sorrow, grief, anxiety, overwhelming situations, uh, disasters that might come through. All of these things that happen, they come through, they happen, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of them, could be raising the ranks of you, could be raising the ranks or raising my rank, could be raising your rank and all of these things we should be thankful to Allah for.
because these are definitely mercies from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is definitely something that could that is deemed merciful from Allah Ta'ala. So with saying all of that, I want to conclude with in this whole pandemic that's going on right now, don't just look at the news and and fill up your your fear meter. Don't overwhelm yourself with what news outlets have to say all of the time, right? Because everyone has an opinion out there and what's worse than news outlets is social media. Everybody has an opinion of, of, of what is going on and why it's going on and is this bad and this government does this and X, Y, and Z. Regardless of what that is, whether they're true or whether they're conspiracies or whether they're right or wrong, remember that there is something that we should be doing as mu'mineen or as believers. We should be taking this time to re-evaluate our situations with our Lord and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given us. Because even many of us in the United States aren't going through what some people in other parts of the world are going through right now with Corona or no Corona, right? So we still need to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we do have. And when we get out of this, all of that thankfulness that we had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we also at that point should not forget Allah and be ghafilan or be ghafil or be absent minded or negligent of Allah ta'ala and what he has done for us. Try and keep that good track record of remembering Allah up because there might be a time where everybody goes through this again, where everyone is just absent mind of Allah Ta'ala. We're not thinking about him. And he brings us back by doing something like this once more. We don't know. We don't see the future. We are not Adi Malayb. We are not. We do not see the unseen. We are not all knowing of the unseen. Right. We just go as life goes on. But we should never be. Uh, we should always be grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show our gratitude for that which he has given us at all times. And so that's what I wanted to mention today. Um, and with that, I will conclude. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.